We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice and share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are in Kikuyu at Samuel Kamau's Shamba. He has eight fine dairy cows. Don't you agree? Huh? Yeah, it agrees with us. Samuel Kamau's three-acre Shamba is in Kiambu County. How have you been? I have been good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, welcome to my farm. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm very glad to show you my farm. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Can you follow me? Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Four cows are in calf and one gives silent heat. He needs some advice on that and how to choose the right seabed. His greenhouse has capsicums and he grows maize and spinach for local markets. So, we'll be bringing an expert from Coopers to advise on silent heats and cow breeding. Kenya Highland Seed is coming to look at the greenhouse. And to help boost his income, we are going to surprise Daniel with a new enterprise from Kenchik. But remember, as with any farm, it's best to start from the ground up. So, we'll test the soil. Without wasting any more time, let's get to work! Soilcase is building a new technology to help farmers test their soil, a handheld soil scanner. Instead of sending soil samples far away to labs and awaiting weeks for results, this new gadget does the work instantly on your farm. So how are your spinach doing? Okay, the spinach is doing pretty well, but I have a few, few problems. Have you ever had your soil tested? Yo, I did sometimes back, but I never got the result. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So don't worry. I brought in an expert from Soil Case. Yeah, okay. He's got this device, mm -hmm. can test the soil and get results instantly. They're going to be nice to me. Yeah, Austin. <laughs> this hey, is Samuel. See you. Tell us about uh, the device. It's called a handheld scanner. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to get uh, the soil analysis services closer to the farmers. Mm -hmm. And um, what uh, the extension officer will do, um, he will go around the farm, taking uh, soil samples with the organ. Mm -hmm. He'll then put it in a convenient um, container say uh, like a bucket and then all he does is uh, take the scanner put it in the bucket press the scan button he'll get a report downloaded to his smartphone right. so we will provide this together with the smartphone are we gonna get the same result as in the lab the nutrients that we check for mm -hmm. will be slightly less yeah. but you have the most important ones but we have the most important ones yeah the scanner measures the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium the ph and the organic matter the results include your own personal fertilizer and lime advice. It's your very own soil laboratory held in your hands. Bona sample, as your farm is, there are some areas that have, um, that show that there are problems with your soil. Okay. So using this, you can get immediate results on what those problems are and you could address them. Okay. Okay. How much does this cost? Because the last one I did, mm. it costed me around 1500. Right. Uh, this uh, will cost 600 shillings to do an analysis. Um, this is a step down from our mobile labs that uh, used to cost uh, 1300 and uh, because um, the extension officer comes with it to your farm, it means then that um, nobody goes with your soil anywhere. You just get your results immediately. Uh, we are targeting uh, uh, agro dealers and uh, extension officers because they are more in touch with the farmers and they are able to penetrate to rural areas. Half the price, cheaper yeah. and faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're going to get the, the result instantly. Instantly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And as you're saying, um, the last time you did a soil test, mm -hmm. uh, you never got your results. Yeah. Right. So by using this, you can get your results uh, speedily and you can get, uh, you can start working on your shamba. You can see it's about to rain. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. These scanners will be available through Agrovets or extension staff later this year who can come to your farm and do the scans. Soon, Farmer groups and farmers will be able to buy their scanners to keep track of their own soil. You can go to a scanner training near you. Just contact Soil Cares for more information. Yes. 
While Naomi has been working with the Soy Cares expert, the Shamba Chepap team have been preparing a surprise for Samuel. We want him to try a brand new business to increase his profits. So, we've been building him a chicken house. We've sighted the house with ends facing east to west to stop strong winds getting in. There is four feet of chicken wire to let the air in. The floor is leveled and a foot bath with disinfectant added to keep the disease out. The brooding pen should be round so chicks don't get crushed in the corners. It has four to six inches of wood shavings on the floor to keep the chicks dry and a jiko to keep them warm. Curtains are added to keep out cold breezes at night. That's it. Time to meet our expert. Rizpa Angari is from Kenchi. She's brought Samuel some chicks to start him off in his first attempt at broilers. Rizpa, yes. good to see you. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. How many are here? A hundred chicks. A hundred. Samuel is going to be very, very pleased. They look, they look so nice. Okay, come with me. With 100 chicks, Samuel can hope to make 30,000 shillings profit in just five weeks. Now, that's good business. So, Rispa, how does everything look? Perfect. You're happy with it? Yes. So I can now go and get someone. Yes. Good, good. I can't wait. I hope you'll be impressed. Right. Okay, Samuel, here we go. Uh, deep. Ah, that's where, that's where the foot bath is. Okay, good. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, someone. Keep going. And there we go. Wow! They're all yours. Now, Rispa, could you explain to the farmer how to manage his chicks? When you're setting the feeders and the drinkers, mm -hmm. you put them in an alternating manner. You put mm -hmm. the drinker, you put the feeder, and then for the water, you put vitamins. Mm -hmm. But now, what we have for the jiko mm -hmm. is slightly lower. We need a jiko that is one foot high, okay. so that the chicks don't burn down there. And then for the heating, you're going to heat for 21 days. Mm -hmm. Always ensure that there's a source of heat for the first 21 days. Okay. And then to observe if the temperatures are cold or hot, you'll be observing the behavior of the chicks. Mm -hmm. When they move closer together at mm -hmm. the edges, you know it's cold. When they move so close to the jiko and under the jiko, no, your jiko is not having any Heat. Heat. Yeah. And then when they disperse quite far and then they are panting mm -hmm. and making a lot of noise, mm -hmm. you know the temperatures are high. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. mm -hmm. Could you explain to us about the feeding regime? For the broilers, mm -hmm. you're only going to be with them for five weeks. Okay. For the first three weeks, mm -hmm. you'll feed them on starter mash. Yeah. Broiler starter mash for the first three weeks. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, you mix for three days with finisher mash. Okay. And then introduce the finisher mash by the fourth day mm -hmm. for a period of two weeks before you slaughter the birds. Okay. How many times a day should he feed the birds? You should ensure the broiler chicks have feeds all the time. Yeah. You should not ration the feed mm -hmm. and withdraw at some other hours. Ensure all the times the chicks have mm -hmm. feed. Broiler chickens are a good business and Samuel can make a lot of profit if he does it right. From day 1 to day 50, it will cost about 300 shillings to raise each chick until it's ready to sell. You can sell a bird at 50 days for about 600 shillings. That's a profit of 300 shillings per bird or 30,000 shillings in 50 days for 100 chicks. It's very important to vaccinate your birds against viral diseases so you don't lose them all. And then for the vaccination, day seven, we are vaccinating against Newcastle and infectious bronchitis. For the day 10, we are vaccinating against Gumboro. Day 18, another Gumboro. Mm -hmm. Day 21, we are going to vaccinate again against Newcastle and infectious bronchitis. With this good advice, Samuel is all set to make more money from his farm. And how soil sampling is done easily, quickly, and cheaply. We've also learned about general management of your broiler chickens. All in one day. But you know, on his shamba, Samuel is a real expert. That's right. 
and he's going to tell us his number one tip in farming. I will recommend them to be eating healthy. So, as you can see on my farm, I have capsicum and uh, spinach, terere, so they can be more healthy and more productive on their farm. And also, I would like them to add more of uh, Kenyaji vegetables like managu, terere, kunde, murenda, and even marbari on their diet. That sounds great. Yes, it does. Coming up after the break. We are going to check out the cows and get some help in the greenhouse. Farmers, do your chicken have scaly legs? I know how you can fix that problem. See, my chicken are healthy. I joined iShamba and I receive free farming advice every week. If you want to join, send the word join to the number 21606 and they'll call you back. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in Kikuyu with Samuel Kamau. We've analyzed the soil and delivered the broilers. Next up, we check out Samuel's greenhouse. And how to get that cow in calf. Peter, the technical director for Kenya Highland Seed, is an expert in growing greenhouse vegetables. He's here to look at Samuel's capsicums, which aren't the best they could be. Samuel, it's yeah. good to meet you. Nice to meet you too. When did you plant this? Around uh, three months ago. And I see uh, you're not doing any drip irrigation at all. Yeah, I had uh, some uh, complication with the drip line, so I had to remove it because they were blocking it. Okay. So I decided to just uh, be sprinkling with the horse pipe. The soil's a bit dry. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, for sure. When I have a look here, Wait. I can see that uh, the watering's not been very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and these crops with a very big plant like this mm -hmm. require a lot of water. Yeah. Uh, they need to be able to take up the nutrients with the water. When the soil gets very hard like this, which it is, it's hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It will constrict the roots and the root hairs. So now nutrients and everything won't come up. Mm. So that will cause a lot of the yellowing as well. Yeah. Because we're not getting Enough proper nutrients. water and nutrients to the leaves. Um, and as you can see, this is a very vigorous plant, yeah. very tall, a mm -hmm. lot of leaf and a lot of fruit. Mm -hmm. And in order to get the fruit development, we need good water and nutrients to come from the soil. A plant that has too many stems would give a good harvest because it will take away energy from the main stem. We've obviously gone with a lot of different shoots coming out of this plant. Yes. Now that will make the plant overloaded. So we're going to start to get fruits which are misshapen like this, yes. which are very small. Yes. These fruits will never grow into a proper fruit now, right. okay? Because there's too much energy going to these fruits when really we want the energy going up the main stems. Yeah. So if we have a look at the main stem here, yes. we have a nice fruit developing here. Yes. And then the next fruit on this stem is this one here. Okay, so with good watering and nutrient uptake, these fruits will develop into very nice fruits. Yes. This fruit here, mm -hmm. we actually need to remove it yes. now mm -hmm. in order to let the energy of the plant go into these fruits, which is where we want okay. the energy to move. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Well, that's good. We're here mm -hmm. to, to teach and to help farmers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something further I notice is we're getting a lot of powdery mildew coming in. Yes. Powdery mildew is a big problem for farmers. It comes when there's a cloud in the morning and hot sun in the afternoon. Powdery mildew likes warm, damp air that can take over the whole crop. In the market, uh, I find that we don't have uh, the fungicide that can uh, reduce the powdery mildew for a few days. We only have the ones for 14 days. So, okay. And again, I am harvesting so that I, I feel that I, I'm not going to give people uh, a lot of uh, pesticide in the uh, capsicum. Okay, well we can refer you to some experts okay. uh, in the chemical industry who will be able to give you some different alternatives okay. mm -hmm. in order to control this mildew. Okay. It's not safe to use fungicides during harvesting. So, Peter promises to find Samuel a fungicide with low post-harvest interval lasting just a few days. 
Uh, there's a farmer not very far from here. He's very good. I mean, he has all okay. the, most of what you said. I think we'd go and visit, right? Excellent. Mm -hmm. Samuel's neighbors have been well trained in growing capsicums. The crop is the same age as Samuel's, but it looks much better. We're comparing uh, this greenhouse and Samuel's, what's the difference in terms of making profit? Yeah, I think this greenhouse, number one, it's got a very good irrigation system. The drip irrigation is well laid out, mm -hmm. so the plants are getting the exact amount of water mm -hmm. and fertilizer as you're growing the crop. Um, also, Muya's kept this house very, very clean. Samuel had issues at the beginning with his drip irrigation blocking up, so he had to resort to watering with a hose pipe, which is never the most accurate, and you get uneven watering. Mm -hmm. um, and further, Samuel had quite a lot of weeds in his greenhouse, which you need to remove because that's competition to the plant. Mm -hmm. So much better to keep your house very, very clean as this one is. Um, and then you will get a much better response from your capsicum plants. If Samuel practiced what we saw right here, would his yields become better? Yes, it certainly would. Samuel could expect four to five times more than what he's currently producing in his greenhouse. Mm -hmm. His plants will also be much more even and that will give you a much more uniform fruit, which all leads to a much better yield at the end of the day. Peter, do you have a training for farmers like me who are much willing to do the greenhouse work? Yes, we at Royal Seed offer training for farmers. And what we do is we come to your farm and we'll train you on the farm. So Royal Seed will train you from the soil preparation to the planting of the seedling and then to the whole agronomy of the plant. So at a two week interval, Royal Seed uh, technicians will be on your farm to do the training at each interval of the plant. So Royal Seed offer this uh, training free of charge and we want to see the farmer benefit at the end of the day. Now because I have seen it for myself, right. I have to pull up my socks and work hard and achieve like this farm. And you will, and I know you will. Yeah. While Naomi and Samuel were visiting his neighbor's farm, I invited John from Coopers to take a look at Samuel's cows. Hey, Tony. Good afternoon. Ah, yeah, here, Samuel. There you are. Hi, Tony. How are you? Somewhere. Yes. Yeah. How was the greenhouse? Oh, the greenhouse was so good. I was very much impressed by the work they are doing there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going to emulate that. Yeah, yes, of yes. course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You're in good hands. Okay. See thank you. Guys you. Later. Thank you so much, Naomi. Now, I hope you're not overloaded because I've got more information okay, for you. Okay, that's good. Good advice. Are yeah. you overloaded? No, 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 no. Not at all. Yeah. Good. Welcome. Now, I brought to you an expert here. Yeah. Is John. Okay. And now, Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm good. And now, you? What did you say is a problem with this cow? It's not coming to clear heat. Mm -hmm. It's coming to silent heat. Mm -hmm. When a cow is on heat, there is a way it manifests itself. Number one, a cow becomes restless. Number two, a cow mounts on others. And if it's on heat, it agrees to be mounted by others. It bears. There is also that um, decreased production. There is the swollen vulva and a clear discharge coming from the vulva. So you see number one to number four are very clear. You can see them by your eyes. But if you don't see, that is what we call silent heat. So watch out for these signs to know when your cow is on heat. Restlessness, mounts others, agrees to be mounted, bellows, milk production goes down. Swollen vulva, clear discharge. Is that where keeping of records come, comes to importance? Yeah, the first cycle comes on 45th day. If you're able to spot from 45th day, you're able to check the, the next 18 to 22 days and you observe the, swell, the vulva had swollen and there is also a clear discharge coming from the vulva. Then that is a clear heat and you are supposed to serve it 12 hours to 18 hours from when you see that side. Okay, John, what is uh, hormonal therapy? This is when now all you have tried everything else and is not working. Mm -hmm. This is when now you use hormone. And the hormone you use and the best for the cow is estrumate. Okay. Estrumate is 2 ml. Once you inject your cow today, you wait for 3 days. 
on the third day, your cow will come on heat. Okay. Upon coming on heat, showing the first sign, count from 12 to 18 hours and we inseminate. Can I ask you a question? Does ask it have again. any side effect? It does not have any side effect. I heard you talk about uh, the insemination. Yeah. Which is the best one that you can recommend for farmers? The best semen you can get is from CRV. CRV is sold by Coopers and CRV semen comes from Holland. And where do you get your semen from? I just got them from our local vets. From uh, your local vet? Yeah. Do you select or he selects for you or what uh, happens? Mostly uh, he selects for me. Okay. Which areas in breeding would you like to be your main and key objectives in breeding? Okay, I want to improve on milk production, yes. the udder and the feet and the legs. Okay, now as you also look at the catalog, mm -hmm. I've done something simpler for you. Mm -hmm. The bulls are here. Yes. Very quick reference trait. You can use this in the meanwhile before you use the catalog. Yeah. I've selected the leaders in milk, mm -hmm. the leaders in udder, mm -hmm. and also the leaders in uh, feet and legs. Okay. So that simplifies the whole work for bleeding and bull selection for you. Okay, that's yeah. gonna be nice to me. Thank you. Now, John, what did you advise? all farmers in general when it comes to selecting the breed what what are the main points they should observe one you should have your clear objective your clear breeding objective and that is where the farmers can get returns number two you should uh, select bulls for yourself together with your vet and agree on which bulls you are going to use for a certain period and also i insist again make proper use of records. This will enhance you to avoid inbreeding and also to remain in your breeding goals. And as I insist the last one, avoid bulls and come to artificial insemination using CRV from Coopers. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Thank you so much, John. I think right now what we can do is do the hormone therapy yeah. and then wait and see what happens. Using artificial insemination or AI is the best way to improve your cows. Decide what it is about your cow you want to be better and then use the catalog to choose the right semen. If you keep good records, you can avoid inbreeding. Inbreeding is a big problem for farmers who use bulls. It's time to give the cow the estromate. The vet measures two milliliters and injects the cow. Samuel now has three days to choose a good bull from the CRV catalog before John comes back to inseminate his cow. Yes, right. Well done, Samuel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, that was a great shepherd, wasn't it? Ah, indeed it was. Yes. Samuel, yeah. how was it for you? It was very great. I learned a lot on uh, farm management, in the greenhouse, and on the breeding of the cows. Mm, yeah. Great. So you are really impressed. Yeah. <laughs> and you're very happy with you. You're very hardworking. Thank yes. you. And Samuel, it doesn't have to end here. Mm -hmm. Neither for you at home. All you have to do is get a hold of our information leaflets. To receive all Shamba Shepherd leaflets, SMS the word ALL with your name and address to 30606. If you'd like to receive just the leaflet for this farm, SMS Farmer, that's the name of the farmer, with your name and address to 30606. So you're going to use our SMS services? Oh, for sure. That would be a great idea. Wonderful. Oh. Now, I think our work here is done. Yes, it is. Okay. We are off to the next farm. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Good See you later. <laughs> thank you, okay, thank bye. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Join us on Facebook to talk to other farmers and also take part in great competitions. Also, don't forget, we're on Twitter. Or simply text 30606.